my holidays. I'm so excited. Yeah, I don't know about you guys, but I am sick of this Milky Way galaxy. I am off to the Andromeda galaxy. Billions of stars and planets to explore. Ooh. Oh, but I'm not an astronaut or anything, though. No, no, no. I don't faff around with space travel. I am an astronomer. And I know that to visit Andromeda, all I have to do is wait right here. Now, I know you don't believe me. So, let me play you a sound. Now, sound is a wave. And waves can either be kind of long, lazy waves, or they can be really excited short waves. But it's really easy for me to change whether a wave is lazy or excited. Listen. <laughs> now, what's happening there is that when I move my arm forwards, I give the sound wave like a little bit of a kick. I make it excited, and you hear that as a higher pitch. And when I drag my arm backwards, I drag that sound wave with me, make it a little bit lazy, and you hear that as a lower pitch. But sound isn't the only wave that this speaker's giving off. It's also giving off light waves. And light is a wave just like sound, but instead of hearing different pitches, we see different colours. And that's, you know, really obvious when you see a rainbow. So top of the rainbow, that's the red, they're long and the lazy waves. Whereas the bottom of the rainbow is blue, they're the short, excited waves. So technically, I should be able to show you that when I move my arm forwards, what I do is I give the light wave a little bit of a kick, I make it excited, and you see this as the speaker getting bluer. And when I drag my arm backwards, I drag the light wave with me, make it a little bit lazy, and you see the speaker turn red. But I can't physically show you that. Because I can't move my arm fast enough. I'd have to move my arm at 9,000 miles per second. At that speed, and we're all in Australia. So we don't see this on Earth. The only place we see it is in space. When we look out at all the galaxies, most of them, they look red. Which means they're all moving away from each other. But Andromeda, Andromeda looks blue, which means it's on its way here, right now. So over time in the sky, Andromeda is just gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger until one day it just collides with the Milky Way galaxy. And I'm so excited for that day because it means to visit another galaxy in our universe. All I have to do is wait right here for it to come to me. <laughs> And I don't even have to wait that long. I mean, it's something like two billion years. I mean, actually, you know, see you in Australia. <laughs> Well, Phil, if you didn't like somebody starting with a few death statistics, ending with an intergalactic impact may not have gone down well either. <laughs> That's fine, we can deal with that. <laughs> uh, oh, sorry. Go, go, go for it, Maggie. About this intergalactic um, uh, impact. Yeah. Um, two billion years, so yeah, we don't have to panic too much. No. What do you think is going to happen when, when the galaxies collide? Yeah, well, it, it sounds kind of, well, terrifying, really, when the two galaxies collide. But actually, when two galaxies collide, no two stars collide. So there's so much space in between them that they just miss each other. The biggest problem is the gravitational interaction. So the two galaxies, beautiful spiral galaxies at the minute, they're just going to start tearing each other apart, you know, limb from limb. So we just don't know what's going to happen to the sun. You know, it's kind of on the edge of our galaxy. So will it get thrown out or is it going to get drawn into the centre? We just don't know. But that spiral shape's going to be lost and we're just going to end up as one big blob of a galaxy. I've seen um, sort of animations or, or modelling where they almost seem to dance yeah, they and sort do. Of stars get thrown out and it's quite pretty it's but on a galactic scale yeah. so still a bit scary yeah it's, it's beautiful <laughs> but thank you and I think the sort of set up with the sort of I'm going on holiday but it's coming here was really a really nice way to do it <laughs> Your deli the delivery you chose was very much I, I'd love to put you in front of a actually a bunch of school children, um, so it would be absolutely <laughs> perfect for schools. Do you do outreach to schools? I do a little bit in the department, yeah. I like to take kids up to telescopes and show them the moon and Jupiter and Saturn for the first time. Why did you choose that style of delivery then? Because it's the most that's like me. Um, I could try and do it a different way, but this is me and 
I wouldn't want to do it any other way because I am cheeky and everything like that. So. <laughs> see, <Fourth C>, cheeky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're marking that. <laughs> what would you like to do with your science communication? Where do you see yourself in five years' time? I just, in five years' time, I'd love to have reached the most amount of people possible. You know, just to spread the word about these amazing things that people just have no idea about. You know, the technique I talked about can also be used to, you know, discover planets and, and, and figure out rotations of stars and things like that. And it's something so every day, you know, you hear that when a police car shoots past. So just to reach as many people as possible with as many cool ideas from all aspects of science. And however that, that whatever medium that's through, then I'm fine with that. It'd just be a dream come true. OK, we know where she'll be in five years. We know where she'll be in two billion. <laughs> Big wave of applause, please, for Becky Smethurst. <laughs>